So now we have variables. We have two fractions. So part A, we need a common denominator. Do we have a common denominator? No. With the numbers, we have a 7 and we have a 3. So if we just had numbers, what would be the common denominator with a 7 and a 3? 21. You would need to multiply the 7 by 3, 3 up there and 3 down there, and you need to multiply this fraction by 7 and 7. That would be just the numbers. But now we also have to look at variables. In order to be a common denominator, right now this one's 21 and this one's 21x. This one's missing something. It's missing an x, so we're going to multiply the top and bottom by x as well. Because now the bottom of both of these fractions will be 21x. The top of this fraction is going to be 6x squared, because 3x times 2x is 6x squared. And the top of the other fraction? 35. So now we have a common denominator. We can add our fractions. 6x squared plus 35 all over 21x. Okay. We have to simplify it. So simplifying with fractions means that our final fraction is a single fraction. Because when we look at the original question and we look at our answer, I would agree with you if you don't think that the answer looks any more simple than what we started with. The, the answer is actually a little bit bigger, it almost seems, than what we started with. But this word simplify means that we have to write things as a single fraction. That's been decided. We also have to use what we learned in the first two sections of this chapter to check can we simplify anything in this fraction? Can I cancel out these x's? Can I simplify 21 and 35? What am I allowed to do? Okay. What I need you to remember is any time there's a plus sign or a subtract sign that groups things together, this is one thing. The only way you can cancel something out is if it's multiplication and the factors are identical. This gets grouped together as one big thing. It does not obviously match the 21x. Is there anything you could factor out of the top? Well, if there was a common factor between 6 and 35, you could. But it's where your times table comes in. There is not. 6 is 3 times 2. 35 is 5 times 7. There's nothing in common. So we are done. This is our final answer. We'll circle it. So for part B... Oh, I watched the videos yesterday, guys. Your oohs and ahs, pathetic. Just because, I mean, this mic catches mostly my voice, but you guys needed to be much louder to get onto the video. It always is. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't wait for the clapping part, so. Just give you a mic. I'm sure that would be wonderful. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we got 4 over 5AB and 4B squared. Look at the numbers first for a common denominator. What do you need? With a 4 and the 5, this one's going to need to multiply both by 4 and 4 to get 20. This one needs to multiply 5 and 5. Basically, what you're doing in the common denominator is you look, what's missing? Okay? What else is missing? A. An A in this one, right? And, and a B in the other one. So if you say, what's missing in my denominators? You'll be able to figure out what the common denominator is. Now that we've multiplied that, we're going to get 20AB squared, 20AB squared. 4B times 4 will give me 16B. And 3 times 5 will give me 15a. Now the denominators are the same. The rules for fractions don't change. We can subtract the tops. And this gets grouped together. So I can't cancel anything out unless it's identical on the bottom. 
trust me, you will be so tempted to cancel things out when you're not allowed to. I look on the top, there's nothing I can factor out. So this is the final answer. Questions you can do. Oh my goodness. I tried the font that always makes it crash. Three, four, and five. I don't know, even know if it's still recording. Yeah, I think it is. Let's, so questions three, four, and five.